morning and happy 4th of July weekend to everybody. So this morning I was reading in Acts chapter 10 and also in Chronicles. And so remember when Solomon um, was deemed the person that would be the one to build the house of the Lord and store the Ark of the Covenant. And it was just such a great honor. David wanted to build the house of the Lord and Nathan the prophet said no you can't do that but your son will and so David sets aside all of these amazing supplies gold and silver and wood and and just every every different type of preparation was made for the temple to be built and so towards the end I don't recall the chapter but in this um, after years of David making all these preparations for his son Solomon and David knows you know he's gonna get old eventually he's gonna die and he wants all of these things supplies to be ready for his son Solomon so I was reading this morning in Chronicles and and the word that really struck me is direct um, David prays and he says bless the Lord so he's praising God you know you're an almighty God I bless you I worship you and he says um, I've you know made all these preparations now will you be with my son Solomon and would you direct his heart towards you would you direct all the people direct their heart to you and I just read that word direct and I thought about when you go to a celebration of life service um, what is, what is the MC or the person that's helping facilitate, you know, a celebration of life or, you know, any type of thing, a wedding, um, fundraiser event, a church event. We're going to direct your eyes to the screens. You're going to watch a short video on whatever, a recent missions trip. We're going to direct your eyes to the screen. And we're going to dim the lights. And right now we're going to have you watch a, um, slideshow presentation of pastor so-and-so or, or whatever right but they usually say we're going to direct your attention and so I just I paused and I prayed and I thanked God for that beautiful verse and that beautiful inspired by Holy Spirit word Lord we pray for our prodigals that you would direct their hearts to you so when you're at an event again like a celebration of life and you're listening to the speakers and the relatives and family and friends that are talking about the person's life and then when they say direct your attention to the screen you stop what you're doing and you go to that screen and your eyes turn to the screen maybe you're looking at your phone you're gonna look up maybe you're reading the bulletin or the schedule of the event you're gonna look up you know it's fireworks weekend. People are going to be looking up to fireworks. You direct your eyes. And so I said, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would direct hearts back to you. I just, it just really stirred me that it's a beautiful thing to pray. That we would pray. Sorry about the background noise. We would pray for hearts to be directed to God. That if they're, if our loved one's eyes are on their phone we would say holy spirit direct their attention to butterflies direct their attention to the stars at night direct their attention to pain even that they would you would direct their attention to whatever away from self and introspection and back on our king our god our god reigns our god is the king of the universe our god he um crushed the serpent's head you know, and I just love that. So I pray that that it would inspire your prayers for prodigals. And I also loved how in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius gets saved. He was already a devout man. He was already a man of prayer, but he didn't know the name of Jesus. And so Peter comes and tells him about Jesus. And I said, Lord, there's a lot of good people in the world, people that do good and they try to serve God and they might pray to God. I see women sometimes walking around doing the rosary, but they're in bondage to a religion. Would they get to know Jesus? My sweet daughter, Olivia, her best friend when she was growing up and still a very dear best friend, Jocelyn, her family's all Mormon. And so I would always say, Lord, 
um, help her know you, Jesus. Not the LDS church, not mama's faith and grandma's faith and great grandpa's faith and great, 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 great grandpa's faith, but to know Jesus. And when she was little, I even told her that one time. I said, Jocelyn, I know that you understand that Olivia and our family, we believe a little bit different than you do. She's like, yeah, it's very different. I said, yeah, our faith is different. She was little, like seven or eight or nine. I said, but it's always the most important thing, no matter what, Jesus. Focus on Jesus more than anything. And so Cornelius didn't know Jesus. He knew Yahweh. He was trying to know Yahweh. And the Bible says he was a devout man. God saw, he's El Roy, he sees everything. But he needed to know and understand Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit fell on him. And then he was baptized. And then the Gentiles were getting anointed with the Holy Spirit. And so I pray that we would be so kingdom minded of the name of Jesus. And we would talk about Jesus. And we would radiate Jesus. And we would give the love of Jesus out. And that people would see Jesus in our lives, outside of our lives, if we're on social media, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter or whatever, that we would just post things about Jesus that would just, our lives would be just all about Jesus, morning, noon, and night, amen? And so, Father, even though this weekend is 4th of July weekend, we know that people are in bondage. They're in bondage to self, selfish ambitions, selfish agendas, selfish ways, selfish motives. God, we don't want to be about ourselves. We don't want to be lovers of self. Forgive us of our sins. Help us, Yahweh, Ancient of Days, Holy God, Almighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Yeshua. Help us, God Almighty, Jesus, to be less about ourself and more about you and that's where true freedom comes from paul was in bondage in chains he went through so much physical pain emotional pain but yet he was the most freest man because he knew you jesus and he knew that you were going to keep him and that you who began a good work in paul the apostle you were faithful to complete it and that is true of us that is true of our family members that is true of our prodigals that we pray for morning noon and night so we just pray that you would help us to be mindful of that god that where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom so holy spirit baptize us afresh today give us eyes to see and ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us we pray for the church we pray for the underground church for the persecuted church we pray for those in texas uvalde texas thank you for glenda and her fellowship outreach over there to all of these family members that are grieving that are mourning the loss of babies and these beautiful teachers no god lord we need you in these last days we worship you we pray for prodigals to be saved we pray you would open up their eyes lord i pray for those battling covid those that are sick and weary and depleted and down and 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 hurting that you would help them to understand and god that you are god that you are good that you are holy and mighty and lovely and wonderful and beautiful we love you so much god and we just thank you for this day help us jesus to be about your business lord jesus precious name amen